Hello, everyone, and fellow M3ers. Welcome to today's podcast. I'm Darren Greenwald, the Quality Assurance Manager here at M3, and you're listening to the M3 Minutes. This is a show where we talk about M3 and what's going on in the hospitality industry with the latest trends. Today, we have Mr. Scott Watson. He's our Executive Vice President of Sales and Marketing, checking in to our hotel for today's audio podcast. And we're going to share with you a little bit about what his department does and how he helps make M3 successful. So, Mr. Scott, just take a second to introduce yourself today. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Great to be here today, Darren. Yeah, it is uh, finally a beautiful day here in Georgia. We've been having tons of rain, and it's finally nice out. You can actually go outside and, you know, start your uh, early sunburns for the year. <laughs> Summer is, is here in the Midwest as well. Well, so go ahead and tell me a little bit about uh, what's your position. My position is Executive Vice President of Sales and Marketing here for M3. Been here doing that for almost seven years. My anniversary will be this coming August. Oh, that is fantastic. I just had my uh, seven-year anniversary this February. Didn't even realize we started in the same year. Absolutely. Great minds think alike. Absolutely. So to get a little bit more background on you, where did you go to college? I went to school at the University of Arkansas, Fayetteville, home of the 1994 National Championship Arkansas Razorbacks. Now, was that in cricket or...? <laughs> That was in basketball. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. There we, we go. We were also football national champions in <clears throat> 1962. Okay. So it's been a while since you've had a win. It's been a while, yes. <laughs> but you're a diehard fan. Yes, I am. All right. Well, do you have a fight song that you like to sing out for the fans? Well, uh, we do have a fight song. But instead of a fight song, I think most people associate the University of Arkansas with calling the hogs. Go for it, please. All right, here we go. Everybody around the room, raise your hands. Woo! Pig suey. You do that two or three times, and then the last time you, woo! Pig suey. Razorbacks. There you go. And you can get an entire stadium doing an that entire all together. Stadium, yes. It's, that's amazing what the universities teach us nowadays, isn't it? <laughs> I, you know, I tell people I gave up a good education to go to that school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is perfect. <laughs> so as this is our first podcast, I'd like to take a moment to kind of introduce M3. So, Scott, can you tell us a little about who M3 is? Absolutely, I'd be happy to. You know, when I hear the word who, it, um, it implies kind of a personalization of the company. So I'll, I'll answer it that way first. Uh, you know, in my opinion, M3 is a caring organization kind of focused on the success of our customers, the support of our community, and the lives of our people. We always try to do what's right. You'll hear Alan Reed, our president, say that many times internally, and on a later episode, you'll probably hear him say it right here on this podcast. But we try to help our people grow profitably and pursue excellence. And for me personally, I try to take my position as a steward of M3's resources and our customers' trust very seriously and drive that into the who part of M3 every single day. I would agree with that. That's actually one of the things that drew me to M3 was how we were such a family-oriented company, and you weren't just a number in a sweatshop to get something out the door. We're going to do it the right way and the correct way. Absolutely. As trustworthy as possible. So tell us a little bit more about what is M3. What? That's a more traditional question, what we do and how we do it. Really, if you look at it, M3 at our core is really a technology company focused on exclusively delivering excellence to the hospitality industry. Hospitality is what we are, it's who we are, it's what we do every day, day in and day out. We really have a best of class accounting solution, business intelligence platform, and a labor management tool. And our goal is really help our customers become more successful by driving that financial performance. So what makes M3 different from all of our competitors? It's a great question, Darren, and I think, you know, the last two questions kind of talk about a few of the things that make us different, um, not only from our perceived competitors, but many companies in general. You know, if you focus on the people, uh, the products are going to come. If you focus on our customer success, then the financial performance is going to come. By focusing on reinvesting in our people, in our community, and our customers, the growth opportunities and the brand awareness comes. The key difference, I guess, is that uh, compared to other folks in the industry, we serve over 5,000 properties with our solution. 
which is about five times more than anybody else that attempts to do what we do. Um, but again, I, I don't really spend a lot of time considering what makes us different. I try to spend my time and effort on focusing what we can do that makes us the best. And this is kind of foreshadowing a little bit because as our 20th anniversary is coming up, we're gonna have some fun questionnaires. But did you know that when you and I started seven years ago, this company of M3 was just breaking their 2000th property? I did not know that. That's an interesting fact. That's uh, pretty amazing going from 2000 to 5000, such a short amount of time and a loyal customer and employee base. That's something that truly makes us different. It's been a lot of fun. And your comment earlier about being a family oriented company, I think our, um, our employment or our employees have grown by about 300% since that time as well. So uh, we have a few more mouths to feed and a few more bodies under roof. And that's definitely even an understatement. I think when we started, I was probably around the 30th or 40th employee. And Alan told me the other day we were pushing 200. Wow. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing what this company is able to accomplish. Fantastic. So to continue to build up more of a background, since this is our fir first podcast, tell me a little bit about um, why now? Why are we going to start doing this podcast? Great question again. And I guess the question or the answer, uh, the short answer is why not? Uh, why not now? The longer answer is that we're just at that point in our marketing life cycle. It just, it just makes sense to do it. You know, two years ago, uh, many of the people around this table weren't here, or at least not in these positions. Uh, we didn't have a marketing department at all. And since that time, just in the last two years, we've not only established a formal marketing department, but we've formalized our communication strategies. We've engaged with the public relations firm to help us spread the M3 gospel. And we've tried to adopt a more proactive and relevant social media strategy. But the podcast is really an idea that originated with Megan Horn, our marketing coordinator. It's really her baby, so at this point in time, I think all I can do is, is screw things up. Some of the best inventions come from messing <laughs> things up, right? So, uh, you know, overall, what would you say the high-level vision of this podcast is going to be? You know, at a very high level, I think it gets back to the who of M3. We just hope this podcast will allow people to see the personality of M3. And uh, they will love it, I'm sure. We have a fantastic group of people all the way through and through from personality to their heart in this company. Wonderful. So tell me a little bit about what our listeners should be expecting to hear when they listen to these podcasts. Well, I think as they begin to listen, we'll start with some of the basics. I think you'll hear discussions from some of the various team leaders within M3. They will share more specifics about our products and services, some of our customer engagements. But as the season progresses, we hope to illustrate Kind of how M3 promotes a culture where leadership's developed and customer service always comes first. We'll share about helping, uh, we'll share about how we help to ensure the equality of women in the workplace and we'll provide a glimpse into our international growth strategy. So really we hope that the episodes, the listeners will hear directly from some of our customers as, as well as people here from M3. And I think we'll close out the season by celebrating M3's 20th anniversary. And that's, that's actually very cool because I remember, again, one of the first things that really caught me off guard was our customer service rating. Uh, when I was interviewing for this place, they said it was 98% customer satisfaction, which is unheard of in any industry. And being a part of a hotelier group really is cool because, in general, they're friendlier. So when you're you know, doing accounting for a hotel firm, it's more personable compared to a manufacturing or construction line that's maybe just trying to get the job done as quick as possible. Absolutely, and that 98% number is a, is a key number in a number of areas. It not only represents our customer satisfaction rating, but we send surveys out to customers on a regular basis, and we ask them if they'll recommend M3 to others, and uh, you get up to that 95, 98% level, and they not only recommend M3 to someone else, but they'd highly recommend M3 to someone else. And that's what makes us special. Absolutely. So we've kind of foreshadowed on our company expanding. So where can customers or even future customers expect to see M3 this year? Great question, Darren. Uh, we'll actually be all over the map this year as we have in years past. You know, the sales and marketing teams are out and about every week. They go to local and regional events, go to various activities, conferences. But we really have focused where we exhibit and, and take the team in mass to really two conferences. One is the Hunter Hotel Conference, 
and the other is HITECH, which stands for the Hospitality Industry Technology Exposition and Conference. Uh, Hunter was just a couple months ago down in Atlanta, and the HITECH North America Conference is going to be down in Houston next month. But you'll probably also see us in some capacity at events like the Lodging Conference in Phoenix, the Annual Hotel Conference in Manchester. Uh, we've already returned from the International Hotel Investment Conference in Berlin, Germany, and uh, ALICE, which is the American Lodging Investment Summit in Los Angeles. And how was that trip to Germany? Fantastic. Yeah. Food was remarkable. Um, no, but uh, it's a great conference. It's, it's really a well-attended conference. Uh, people there are thirsty for technology, and um, it, it's amazing to think we've been doing this for so long, and we take a lot of things for granted here in the United States, but the technology is, is to a point where I think we can really take advantage of it in the UK. So when you go to these conferences, what are you showcasing? You know, typically we showcase our product and service line, which we've already talked about a little bit. We're going to do it a little bit different this year. We're going to take a couple of our product managers, product owners, so that the attendees that stop by the booth can hear about some of the new things that we'll be introducing later this year. And also, conferences are just a great time for us to visit with customers, renew old relationships, say hello to folks. And we spend a lot of time listening and kind of snooping around with some of the other booths and companies just to make sure that we stay on the leading edge of things. And then uh, your first answer to that, you were talking about how we've already gone over into Europe. We're in Germany. So can you tell us a little bit about our partnership with French Duncan? Absolutely. There's a company called French Duncan that's a certified accountancy firm in the UK. They're based out of Glasgow. Um, I've been talking to them for probably about three years. Um, and finally, we got to the point of formalizing things with them. So we had their senior staff come to see us in our offices here last summer. Uh, then Alan Reed, our president, and I went over to see them in their offices this last fall, and we kind of formalized the relationship at that time. Uh, Cassie Johnson, our chief operations officer, and Sean White, our accounting core product owner, are headed over there in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, French Duncan offers, I think, what we would consider here in the United States traditional CPA services. They've done that for quite a few years, but about a year ago, uh, they decided to start a hotel-specific accounting division, and uh, there was functionality that they were seeking to support that marketplace effectively, and we just happened to be in the right place at the right time to provide them a solution. So over time, uh, it is our hope and our design that M3 will become the accounting product of choice for that entire hotel accounting division. And I have full confidence in that. And I'm actually glad you mentioned a couple of those people's names because as we continue to do these podcasts, you'll actually get to hear from each of those people, such as Alan, as you mentioned before, or even Sean White, who's our accounting core product manager. So this partnership that we have with them, why is it such a big deal for M3? It is a big deal. It's a big deal because for the first time in the company's history, uh, we're serving the needs of a customer that's based outside of the continental United States. We have had some properties that have been managed by domestic partners and, and customers here in the United States, but for the first time we have a company that's actually based outside the United States um, that is using M3 as their solution. And that company is Sykus Hospitality and they're based out of Amsterdam. So as, as we rewrite the software for French Duncan in the UK market, it also puts a foundation in place so that we can expand and leapfrog uh, to other countries after that. And when you talk about French Duncan and who they partner with, do you know approximately how many properties that is currently? That's a great question. Um, you know, they've got a team that are out prospecting and selling their services just like we do. Um, you know, I believe right now that they have um, 50 to 75 hotels in that division, um, but they have aspirations to dramatically grow that business, and they'll be counting on us to provide a scalable technology solution to allow them to do that. So we talked about global, and global is kind of one of those business buzzwords. It's a win-win, or it's about synergy. So global means different things to every single company. So what does going global mean for M3? Going global, it, it does sound sexy. You know, it's everybody wants to go global. Everybody wants to say they work for an international company. But I think it's important for those that are listening uh, to these podcasts, especially if they're existing customers, they need to understand that our primary concern and our primary focus remains 
serving the present and future needs of the 725 customers and 5,200 properties we have right here in the United States. So again, that, that is our focus. But at the same time, we have to also be prepared to serve that global market because if we don't, somebody else will. I spoke earlier about the technology needs of that market. So there is a void there and we need to be able to step in and, and fill it. So, um, our, you know, I think our global strategy, it's nothing complicated. We simply wanna go where the business leads us. We're not gonna be deploying a global sales team anytime soon and prospecting in every corner of the earth. But if we get requests to serve certain customers in certain markets, we'll do the proper due diligence. And if it makes sense, we'll do our best to go and serve their needs as well. That was a fantastic answer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, with all these things going on, we're not even through this entire year of 2018 yet. So we're going to be hitting a lot of key highlights. So what are some of the big moments that have happened so far at M3 this year that we can already talk about? Well, we talked about both of us being here. Uh, this is our seventh year with the company. And I think every year it seems like we, we look back at our holiday party or as we begin our budgeting process and it seems like there's always great things to look back and, and celebrations to partake in. And 2018, even though it's early in the year, is, is really no different. As I mentioned earlier, we've added our 700th customer, our 5,000th hotel, and our first customer that's based out of the United States. A couple of exciting things that I think our employees here have liked is we've moved into brand new office buildings in Gwinnett, uh, Georgia and Tampa, Florida. And these offices are just top-notch all together. It's amazing. It's, a, it's almost like a Google-esque, right? <laughs> we have pool tables, shuffle boards. People are beginning to get more of a development software mindset to where a meeting doesn't have to be held in an office. Maybe you go outside and do the meeting in, in the patio. There's so many very cool attributes that not only attract seasoned veterans here, but also the new generation that will continue to bring our company forward. That, that is a great point. And that's one of the reasons we moved as well. Um, not only to have the space available, but our prior offices were, were quite a ways north. So by moving down closer to the Atlanta metropolitan area, it's going to allow us to attract the talent we need to sustain the growth that we're projecting over the next decade. So what are the, some of the things that are coming down the pipeline that we can be looking forward to? Now, now you're getting the tricky questions. Uh, you're going to have to ask some of the other guests that are coming in and some of the other episodes that question because I do not want to be the one to give away any secrets. But what I can share, one of the things that we're focused on on the marketing side is uh, making sure that we properly celebrate M3's 20th anniversary uh, later this fall. And if that wasn't tasty enough... Make sure that you subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and our SoundCloud for the M3 meetings because that is a great way to stay up to date for all the future podcasts that are coming so you can get all the key news that we're foreshadowing in this podcast today. So 20th anniversary, this company started back in 1998. So just tell us a little bit about when is actually the 20th anniversary. Well, the 20th anniversary, uh, you know, there's a lot of dates when you start looking at an organization when the first charter was signed and when the first customer was signed and when the first transaction took place. But um, we're going to be celebrating the 20th anniversary in November. And so with November, it's about that time to start buying Christmas gifts and everybody's <laughs> getting excited because we're celebrating just about everything. So what can we, what can we be looking forward to when our anniversary comes? Um, I'm going to have to defer that question, I think, to uh, Jessica Hollingsworth. Jessica is M3's employee engagement ambassador, but I call her the ambassador of fun. I think she's got the, one of the grooviest jobs in the company, and I'm sure she's already started the planning process. I bet she has. Uh, in her short time here already, she's held multiple events, such as just taco trucks out in the parking lot for everybody to mingle. We've done some team-building activities from throwing around a Death Star ball, it's kind of like playing hot potato to whoever's the last one's left when some cool M3 paraphernalia. It's a, it's a very exciting job that she can be a part of the human resources team while also not only building us from the outside in, but also keeping our employees together. So last but not least, you know, we were talking about we've been here for about six years, or sorry, seven years. So talk about how far M3 has come within the past 20 years 
Well, I see all the old pictures and stories, and like you mentioned, um, when you and I started, we were just under 2,000 properties. So, uh, you know, it's been fun to be here during a large growth spurt. But as far as looking back into that first decade or decade and a half, you mentioned earlier that, that folks like Alan Reed, our president, Cassie Johnson, our chief operations officer, and Dennis Jackson, uh, who's one of our other executive vice president, um, they're all going to be, I think, on a podcast. They've been here either since the beginning or almost from the very beginning. And they're going to be able to provide a much better perspective than I can on that entire uh, 20 year window. I can just tell you that I'm a blessed man that they allowed me to kind of come along for the ride. And that's actually something I love about M3. When you work at a larger conglomerate, you hear about the COOs and the EVPs, and they're just more like mythical creatures. You know, there's these great high pedestal people, but you never hear them. And in our offices, going back to the whole family aspect, our president is here in the office. You know, if, uh, if we're in remote offices, we're FaceTiming with each other or, you know, doing Skype video conferences. So we see each other every day. It's such a cool aspect to where regardless of where you are in the company, everybody's involved and everybody's together. It is. And, and I would say for those that don't know M3, even though we've talked a little bit about the exponential growth that we've seen both from a customer and a property perspective as well as an employee perspective, uh, we still remain a very flat organization. Um, so there's just not a lot of separation from everybody that's doing their job to make us successful every day um, up to the corner office of, of Mr. Reed. And he is out and walking around the office every day and talking to people and looking to see what type of obstacles that he can remove uh, from, their, from their duties to make sure that they're as successful as possible. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. We're one of the best in-shape companies I've ever been in. So, Scott, we've been talking a lot about the past 20 years. Let's talk a little bit about our careers here for seven years. You know, um, what's one of the most proud things that you've accomplished so far? It's a great question. I think it almost goes back to how we began the podcast and talking about the who part of M3. Um, you know, I, I usually have the opportunity to, to share a few stats or say a few things at the holiday party every year or some of our all-hands meetings. And, um, you know, I, I take the responsibility very seriously about driving the revenue and the growth of the company, but I don't look at it as statistics or numbers. What I like to do is look around every year at the meeting and see how many new faces are around the M3 communal table. And, uh, you know, I look at that as a new opportunity for someone to provide for their family and establish a career here. So um, when we look at all the new faces around M3, that's, that's one of the things that I'm proudest of. I really like uh, the new faces. At some of our partners' meetings, we go ahead and actually have breakout sessions to where we get to sit down and just listen to our customers. Have you had any opportunities to sit down and be a part of those groups? I have. I, I try to get into all the breakouts at the partners' meetings. Um, we also, from a sales perspective, have the opportunity to bring customers and prospects here into the office for a visit and spend a little bit more time one-on-one. -on -one. And then our marketing team actually uh, documented some of those comments and visits at the last partners meeting. And I think we have uh, some clips of those either on the website or available in our deep dark archives somewhere where uh, the guests of this podcast can see what some of our customers have to think as well. So since our 20th anniversary is coming up, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of a game. 20 years ago, our company was founded in 1998. And so we're going to ask you a whole bunch of questions, seven in total about what was created and just fun facts about that time. But to go ahead and warm you up, I want to kind of showcase you a little bit more, Scott. So 20 years ago, what were you doing? Wow. Well, unlike, uh, well, some of the other people you talk to will have answers to that other than playing on a middle school football team or, you know, enjoying cartoons or something like that. But, uh, you know, as, uh, 20 years ago, I was probably doing what I'm doing today selling or leading a sales team somewhere, traveling to earn a living, leaving my wife at home to deal with everything in the world while managing, a, at the time, a four-year-old son and a seven-year-old daughter. Wow, that's really cool. So your kids are out of the house now? They are out of the house. Oh, so time to go join some empty nesters groups? <laughs> or They're never quite all the way out of the house, <laughs> even when they're out of the house. 
All right. So another one is, where were you living 20 years ago? Same place I am now. Still live in the great town of Springfield, Missouri. Same house. Thankful the same wife. Um, couldn't accomplished everything that we've talked about today without her support. And what, what would you say is like the best thing about where you live? It's, you know, it's really, um, it's right on the Missouri-Arkansas border, uh, just on the southern part of Missouri. My father-in-law, my late father-in-law, had a uh, saying for that part of the world. It was Lapland. He said that's where Arkansas laps over into Missouri just a little bit because he was from Newport, Arkansas, so he was a big Razorback fan as well. But uh, it's right in the middle of the Ozark Mountains. Table Rock Lake is, uh, is just a beautiful lake. So it's, uh, it's just very scenic, very outdoors. You can just take some time to unplug. And that's great. That's actually a great tie-in for a technology company. When you want to take some time off, you got to unplug. You do? Oh, there you go. All like right. That. Did you practice that one? Uh, you know, all week. <laughs> <laughs> and today's Monday. So uh, what job did you have back in 1998? 1998. Uh, I was with a company called Private Business Inc. Um, that sold products and services into the banking and finance area. Started in a business development uh, sales role and then moved into a national accounts position and finally uh, promoted to lead a regional sales team. That company was purchased a few years later uh, by a company called Jack Henry and Associates, which just happened to sell core accounting systems, but they specialized in banking and financing, not hospitality. And private business actually was acquired by Jack Henry um, a few years later. So um, it all kind of came together. Well, all right. Now that we got those questions out of the way, do you feel warmed up? Are you ready for the major challenge? Well, just remember, um, I have the early stages of, of dementia. So I don't know that I can remember 1998, but I'll do my best. Gotcha. Well, that's why I was trying to get your attention. Like, I'm over here, Scott. you oh, got to okay. look at me. Okay. All I, right. I kept hearing voices. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So number one, and just to let everybody know what we're doing with this competition, is we're going to ask all of our uh, members that come on to the show seven questions for our 20th anniversary back in 1998. And we're going to see who can get the most out of them. And these aren't going to be easy. It's not going to be multiple choice. They're going to have to see if they can pull it directly from recall. So number one, Mr. Scott, is who was the president in 1998? 1998. Is this, is, is this supposed to be a gimme? It would be um, William Jefferson Clinton, perhaps, or George Bush? Or... Well, well, that's two. You got to pick one. Okay, let me count backwards. Sure. Okay, we, we're with President Trump now. Uh -huh. We had Barack Obama from um, 2016 back to 2008, right? Yeah, math is out. Math is working so far. Yeah, yeah. So from 2008 back to 2000 was George Bush. He was a two-termer, wasn't he, I think? Oh, you're smiling. Yeah. He was a two-termer. You're, you're getting close to and the so year. So before him was William Jefferson Clinton. William Jefferson? Yeah. What was his nickname? Bill. There you go. Yeah, Bill Clinton. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a... That, that was a good representation of a, a sales working back. There you no, go. It's not, not going to be go. straight. you got to give the history. So that's great. All right, one for one. Question number two. Can we just stop? You are batting 100%. There you go. But All right. Nah, we got, we got to see how much more you got stored up in there. So number two is name one of the top three movies in 1998. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. That actually may have come out before, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, Saving Private Ryan. Wait, Saving Private Ryan. That is one of them. Okay. Armageddon. And There's Something About Mary. Mm, wouldn't have guessed that one. I wouldn't have either. Actually, I wouldn't have guessed any of those three. I would have guessed Beauty and the Beast. Well, that's good, because... 30, 40 seconds ago, that was your <laughs> guess. <laughs> so I'm glad, I'm glad it didn't change during that time. All right, so one for two. Question number three is, in 1998, whose tagline was, think outside the bun? Think outside the 
fun. Yep. That that is a well known catchphrase of the company um, Burger King. Mm. No, Taco Bell. Hmm. And that's tricky because they specialize in burritos. So when you think of a bun, you're kind of thinking Aren't about... Aren't they owned by the same company as Burger King? Doesn't PepsiCo own all them? They might. So technically, I might have been right. I see how you're working. <laughs> since it was working pretty well. <laughs> all right. So question number four is... So am I, I'm still one? You were one. Yep, you got one okay. point so okay. far. Okay. Three questions to go. So question number four is... Where was the first W Hotel opened? And again, this was back in 1998. New York City. Yep, it's in New York on Lexington Avenue and 49th Street. All right, so the next question we are, you got two so far, is in 1998, how old was Cher when her album Believe came out? Well, I believe in life after love. <laughs> uh, let's see. She would have probably been... She would probably be 52 years old. Yeah. That's impressive. You must have wikipedia that one, or she's your favorite songwriter, secretly? No, I just figured um, well before your time was the Sonny and Cher variety show. Mm -hmm. Figured she was in her 20s. Added 30 years on to that. Would have put her in her 50s. Took a stab in the dark. That 52. Was, that was a pretty good one. And you just assumed that's well before my time, huh? Yes, <laughs> I did. <laughs> so you're rocking and rolling so far. You got three out of the questions that have been asked so far. And speaking of rock and roll, in 1998, who was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? There were a number of people. Yeah. There's multiple right answers on this Oh, one. okay. Let's go with um, the Eagles. Yep, you got it. And what was your favorite Eagles song? You know, I like all the classics. But off uh, an album that came out, uh, I don't know how long ago now, 10 years maybe? The title cut off Long Road Out of Eden is actually a pretty good song. Well, you are currently on fire at getting all these questions correct. I need to take you out to dinner sometime. We need to go enter a trivia competition and see how we do. Let's do it. All right. So now the last question is going to be, how much did a movie ticket cost 20 years ago in 1998? Student, adult, or senior citizen? Regular. <laughs> what, was it even broken out that long? Ago? That would be $2.50, Darren. Close, almost double that. $4.69. <laughs> oh, we'll see. I always took my wife. Ah, so you just so, assume. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Very technical. Yeah. So, Scott, that was a lot better than I could have ever done. I probably wouldn't have gotten any of those correct. So you got four out of seven, which I think is a fantastic start to the beginning of this podcast. So I'd like to go ahead and wrap up your stay here. Will you have any last words you'd like to give to our listeners? You know, I just hope that, um, that people enjoy learning who M3 is, learning a little bit about what we do, hearing a little bit about the DNA that makes up our company. And um, it's just been a pleasure to be here and share some things that bounce around in my head all the time and uh, look forward to hearing the rest of the work that you guys pull off with this thing. Well, thank you very much, Scott. I appreciate you coming out today. It's been fun having you here, getting to know not only about the company more, but also you yourself as part of the M3 family. And for our listeners, I'd like to thank you for listening to our very first podcast. I think it went fairly successful overall, and we'll continue to provide great content as it continues to come out, not only on just the sales and the vision of the company, but also our individual products and other services that we're able to offer on trending technology. Make sure that you subscribe to our M3 podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, and on our SoundCloud. 
and we're going to try to release new episodes towards the end of every month, so be sure to come back and continue to listen. The best way to keep up to date with us is to follow us on social media. You can add us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. As always, M3 is here for you, and here's to your success.